Hi again, and welcome to Tech Tip Tuesday. Today, I'm going to give you a quick example of how to easily integrate a web worker in your Angular application to optimize performance and stop your main UI thread from hanging when doing computationally complex tasks. So I've got a very simple app component in my you know, boilerplate Angular application here. And what I've done is I've actually written a function that finds the nth prime. So that means that if I give this function a number like 100, it's going to find the 100th prime starting from 2, 3, etc. And I've also created a template that you see here. And there you see that I can actually put in here the number 100, and I can calculate the 100th prime. And OK, that's pretty good so far. But if I start, you know, I want to calculate the 10,000th prime. You can see my actually I'm timing the execution of my function and it's starting to become, you know, slower the higher and higher I get here. And it actually goes into the multiple seconds and you can see that my UI is actually hanging right now. I can't click on anything. OK, now it's finished executing and uh, there you go. So that can be a common problem if you have computationally intensive uh, tasks that you need to execute in your code, then you know, you can stop your main UI thread from executing and it can lead to a really bad user experience. So what I want to do today is to show you how you can set up something called a web worker to do this task in the background so that we don't block our main UI thread and the user can still interact with it uh, that way. So Angular actually makes this very easy for us since the only thing we need to do is really invoke the Angular CLI by calling ng generate web worker. And then we need to tell the Angular CLI where we want to place our web worker. In this case, it's inside my app component. So I'll go ahead, run that. And the Angular CLI is going to simply add here a worker file and where actually the worker lives. As you can see, this is simply an event listener, which listens to the type event type of message uh, and responds with some data. So we're going to use that worker to execute our task in the background. You can also see that the Angular CLI has added some code here, some boilerplate code here that we're going to use to talk to our worker, use inside our components. And it's also added some registration information inside our Angular JSON for the web work. But I won't go into that in this video. So how do we actually move our code from here in our components to the web worker? So I simply can just take this function, cut that over there, and start by moving that in here. And I'm going to have to use the function keyword to declare that in my JavaScript file here. And then I'm going to actually structure my worker so that it's going to take the data there and it's going to construct a response by finding nth prime there, passing data.num. And it's actually going to post that as a message. So we just need to structure this now as a message response. So I'll just type here something like prime. So now we're going to respond with an object that has one property prime with the nth prime. And now our worker knows how to find that prime. So the only thing left to do is now to actually interact with our worker inside our components. So here I have my click handler, which is before was calling directly that function. But now what I want to do is I'll just remove that for now. And I'll actually take this boilerplate code, move it inside of my click handler function. And as you can see, what this boilerplate code is doing is checking if the worker type actually exists. And for now, we'll just assume that it does. If it doesn't, then you'll have to write some code here to kind of handle that situation where you don't have access to web workers. So here what happens is we're actually creating that new worker. And when we receive a message from that worker, the message will be, of course, that prime number that I've been computing for a while. What we're going to do is not console log, but actually set it to the result here. And we'll actually set data.prime to my results. And what I want to do when I click on my number is actually post a message with, of course, the number there. And 
I can do that by simply creating a data object there with the number. So let's see how this works out. Now that I've moved my prime number calculation into a web worker outside of my UI app, I can actually just calculate the prime number, number 10,000. Okay, that's still very fast. But if I go for 1 million, it'll take a few seconds. And as you can see, my UI thread is not being blocked by that calculation since we've moved that calculation outside of the main UI thread into a worker thread. So yeah, I hope this helps you guys to make your Angular UIs even more performance and snappier than they already are and give your users a great experience without any kind of freezing or hanging in the UI. So I hope you have a great Tuesday and see you on the next one.